Hey guys, welcome to the Nam O'Clock News. Dan here. Mick here, day two, day two. Day two. We've had some comments saying we're not taking this pedal thing very seriously or the Nam thing very seriously and we're not serious about great guitar tones uh, and everything that goes along with it. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I can't believe it. To point that fact out, we are right next to Disneyland. And to be honest, it would have been tempted, but we haven't. Haven't even we, been there. We haven't been there once. Not haven't once. been Hardly there at once. All. Probably not at all. No. Um, so yes, so, day two. Yeah, day two of uh, not the Nam O'Clock News, or the Nam O'Clock News. The Nam O'Clock News. Yeah, yeah, anyway, okay, right. Uh, in all seriousness, oh my barnet's gonna be terrible now. Imagine the comments, Dan. Day two, uh, you will be watching this on Saturday. No, Friday. Friday. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. For, for, it's been a big day. Yeah, it has been a big day. And of course, we're, you know, we're, we're eight hours behind our usual time zone. So um, again, we're just making sure that we stay hydrated and uh, continue to take it seriously. Yes. That, it, it so suits you. You like that? Come on, on, okay. with, the on with the show. Right, to we started this morning. We caught up with our dear friend, Gear Man Dude, who we met in Germany this year for the first, last year for the first yep. time. Uh, legend and from there we went to Fender. We did go to Fender. Fender uh, ha have always have loads of awesome things happening. We mentioned the custom shop event yesterday. One of the things that really piqued my attention was the new Eric Johnson Strat with the F-hole. Uh, Dan's gonna tell you a story in a minute. Cannot wait to try that guitar. <laughs> That's so inappropriate. I cannot <laughs> wait. <laughs> To try Simon's gone. Simon's totally gone. Uh, I can't wait to try that guitar. If we seem a little more effusive than yesterday, it's not because we're drunk, it's because we've sort of woken up, I think. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Eric Johnson Strat. Dan, what happened last night? I went and saw Eric Johnson last night for the first time ever, and he was incredible. He was doing the whole of our Vi music on, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, our dear friend Tor from TC said, Oh, I've got a spare ticket. So while these two stayed here and edited video until the wee small hours. Uh, he did all the editing. I, I went out and got to, got to meet Eric afterwards and uh, you know, here's a photo of me just hanging out, <laughs> Eric chilling. That was amazing, just cool. wonderful. So uh, yeah, Eric Johnson's strap with the F hole, can't wait to try one of those. However, uh, more relevant to what we're talking about, Fender has introduced a new line of pedals and you can hear all about them now. Okay, we're at Fender, uh, we're with Stan Cody, who has designed this amazing range of Fender pedals. Now, we've had a, a, an inkling that these are going to come out for a while. Yeah. We'll be very excited about these. Um, so, okay, take us through them, because there's some very cool things that you've got going on here. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, a whole new line for us, and they all started from scratch. And, and I did a bunch of them, but I have a small team who are awesome as well that worked on them. So um, they, we have a buffer. The buffer is a good front of chain buffer, so it helps make the signal fortified. You mm -hmm. punch through a lot of other pedal, pedals and cables. It's got a couple of cool features on it. It's got a tuner split, so you can have a tuner pedal running the whole time. Oh, nice. It's got a mute switch, so you can tune silently if you want. Um, also, this is set up for people who do guitar swaps. I use different guitars on gigs. A lot of people mm -hmm. do. And what's fun about it is it's got a level control and a high frequency trim control. So if you go from playing a guitar that's like a vintage Strat, with, mm -hmm. you know, the, where the pickups are bright and clear, and then you switch to something with a humbucker where it's maybe a little girthier or darker, you can turn the level of the humbucker guitar down and add some chime to it. And it doesn't make it sound like the Strat, it just makes it play nicer with it. Okay. We have our Benz compressor. Um, it's a stop style compressor, so it has all the cool kind of squishy dynamic characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing the Benz does that's really cool is the uh, detector circuit inside is really precise and really fast. So compressors, you know, kind of watch your signal playing, and as you get louder, they start to turn you down. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, if you play a really loud thing, like, like a big abrupt loud chord, uh, it'll, it takes a second, right? And so you get a big pop at the front of the note. The detector is really precise and fast, so it, it minimizes that. So you can play just like super gracefully and lightly, and then slam it, and it just grabs it and holds it. Okay, Mick, just have a, have a try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. 
so this is a uh, bypass. So th this is tons and tons and tons of compression. If you play, just just scrape your pick lightly over the strings, right, and then just slam it. It's like slam a chord, slam yeah. a loud chord. Right, there's no. And then if you set it more to human settings, it's just a good workable um, you know, compressor. It's got a recovery time. You can see the LED changes colors to show you when the compressor is gain reducing, yep. which is useful because compressors sometimes when they're doing their thing, it's like, is it on, is it off? I yeah, don't yeah. know, right? So this kind of gives you a clue. And there's a blend control, so you can blend in your original dynamics if you want to keep, which gives you kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, so that's the bends. Um, the Santa Ana Overdrive was designed by my friend Alex Aguilar, who's a great guitar player. People know him from the bass world, but yeah. he's a really, really great guitar player and has done some good high gain stuff. So the Santa Ana is FET based, and but it has a stabilized high voltage power supply in it. Mm -hmm. So we run the FETs a little closer to how they might work if they were actually being tubes. And so dynamically, right. they kind of perform like that. So to me, this pedal lives in the range of like not distorted at all to just on the edge of breakup, right? Bluesy kind of breakup. Um, and then it gets into good kind of mid gain territory. And it can get gainy. Um, but the fun thing about it is really kind of that in between zone. And for me, like if you turn down, it cleans up really nicely because of the higher voltage in the headroom. And then turn it up more. So pretty clean. And then if you turn it up, it just. Let's you do the whole read, lead to rhythm switching from yeah. your volume knob and just play the guitar as a guitar. Nice, There's nice. There's a switchable boost that can be set to be either pre or post with ah, a switch. Very good. Um, a three band set of tone controls and a presence control. The voicing switch is fun. Alex did this really cool thing where you know some amps are pedal friendly and some amps are like bright and they're not pedal friendly. They're mm -hmm. great for rhythm playing, but you put a distortion pedal on and it can be fizzy. Mm -hmm. So what this switch does is a whole bunch of stuff under the hood where it shifts the mid character and it applies some filtering to the top end and it takes kind of the fizz off. The Pugilist Distortion, this one I did, this is a lot of fun too. It's two separate distortion engines in one pedal. And so from a range of tones, right, they can go from really clean, right, to just like a tiny little bit of edge of breakup into kind of mid-gain crunch territory. And that's the lower gain side. Then the higher gain side can get to be a lot more raging. But what's fun is if you take, you can blend between the two sections. So if you take a cleaner sound and you play something kind of chunky and rhythm like, what I can do is I can blend in the cleaner sound and all of a sudden you start hearing the pick attacks. Very cool, very these are cool. All analog and these guys are all true bypass. Um, these guys are digital. So this is our mirror image delay and the marine layer reverb. Um, and they share some similarities. They have a blended bypass scheme where the delay trails or the reverb trails will decay naturally. So if you're blazing on a solo and you've got this big beautiful delay thing going and you turn the delay off to go play rhythm, the note will just trail out naturally. Uh, the delay has three different sets of sounds in it. It's got a digital model that's just clean and pure. It's got a bucket brigade model where we model the, the characteristics of a bucket brigade, including some decimation and some you know, kind of bit reduction kind of stuff yep, yep. Um, and some filtering. There's a tape model. Um, all the delays have modulation. By the time you get to the tape model, the modulation actually affects the character of the wow and flutter. So if you want to get crazy with wow and flutter or keep it kind of clean. Um, there's a variation for each, which kind of gives you a new or old kind of deal. Right. It's got a whole second delay engine buried under the hood that's set up to a dotted eighth. So if this is doing a quarter note delay, you can just flip the dotted eighth and it'll add a second dotted eighth to whatever you're playing. Nice. So just kind of instant Very rhythmic nice. delays. Can we hear that? Yeah. So here's the straight digital delay. And then I can add a dotted eighth to it. Right. And it's got a, a cool little feature too, which is the variation of the digital delay is a double tracker. Right. So every time it gets a new note, it'll offset it to a slightly different delay or a slightly different pitch. So you kind of get that late 60s studio experimentation double tracking sound. Is it analog dry through? Is there analog? Yes, yeah. yeah, the analog path is totally dry. So there's no latency of the analog path and it's a super high quality analog, you know. We like that. And then Mick says hooray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's a dry kill switch on the back. So if you have an amp with a parallel effects yeah. loop, yeah, right, yeah. you can keep your analog signal even pure in your amp. Um, the Marine Layer Reverb is on the same platform, so it has all the same stuff, you know, the trails decay naturally, yep. the dry kills there, um, and it has uh, 
uh, rooms and halls where the hall is dense and thick and useful for blazing lead solos. The room's a little sparser and better for rhythm playing. Um, so and, it, and a broad range of, there's a pre-delay control, there's a decay time, and there's a damping control. Um, there's a variation for each. And then also there are cool modes where there's a, um, let's see if I can get it up here. There's a uh, modulated big cavernous space that you can kind of roll a chord into. And, uh, and then if you stop playing, that chord's going to continue. And you can feed it another chord. Now I can bypass it. It holds the chord and you're dry. Then you can feed it another chord. It's got a shimmer mode in it, so you can play, and it adds the um, extra top end sparkly. Same thing on the bypass. So that's the range. We tried to put some really good player-centric features in. We tried to make them easy to use. We tried to give them a good range of useful tones. So yeah. I'm guessing the price point's pretty attractive as well. Yeah, in the US they go from $89 yeah, to, yeah. to $199, right? So the delays and reverbs are $149. Yeah. Uh, no the Pugilist way. is $99. Yeah, we really worked yeah, yeah. hard to, to make them approachable for people. You know, we wanted it to be... That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Awesome. All right, Stan Stan, he's our man. Thank you so much, mate. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I love your guys' show. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back to the studio. Cheers. So what's interesting about those Fender pedals is with features like analog dry through, mm. Even including a buffer at all mm. in a pedal line mm. kind of indicates that they're, they're serious about, about pedals. The, the guy who designed those pedals, Stan, has got a stellar history. He told um, us about real. his history yeah, in audio he's, design. He's um, serious, serious dude. Used to work for Neve doing crazy desks. I mean, his electronics background is... Each one of those pedals was designed from scratch, as in they're not copies of anything. The, or the concept of, every, of each of them was a, starting from nothing. Yep, so uh, a serious entry into the pedal market for sensible sort of money. For, uh, yeah, very impressive, very impressive. One, one of the problems about uh, drinking beer while you're doing a show is the constant urge to burp, so I apologise about that. Simon can hear it rumbling in his earphones, which is better than yesterday's construction work that was going on upstairs, which seems to have ceased, which is great, because I was definitely having a bit of a sense of humour failure I can't, about that. I can't wait to go and see what they've built, though, because yeah. I think it must be incredible. Yeah. And thanks for all your comments about the Tom Waits references. I love Tom Waits. <laughs> um, Fender Hot Rod series uh, has had an update. Check this. <laughs> this is the introduction that needs no introduction, so there's no introduction. <laughs> Fender Hot Rod series, uh, probably the most popular professional tube amps in the world, on stages everywhere, have been updated incrementally over the years by Fender. We're now on series four, and this is Rick who's gonna tell us all about it. Yeah, so to your point, uh, Probably the best selling tube amps of all time, definitely for Fender. Um, at this point, they're over 20 years old, so I mean, they're, they're like a vintage amplifier. Um, and so, you know, the thing about them is you don't want to mess with the things that people love about them. That's really important. But, you know, players' taste change. There are things that's like always elevating, trying to find that next level of what you can do to satisfy players, and that's really where the four comes from. The neat thing is the Pro is one of those amps, I think, over time, people have kind of forgotten about what a cool little amp it is. Those amps sound great, um, but you usually you hit about three and it starts to distort and it just gets dirty. Sure. Yeah. So with the one, what we, what we did is we kept the distortion there, but we gave it more of a gradual tapers. We found a speaker that we thought balanced perfectly with that, which was the Jensen Alnico 10-inch speaker. And those two together, um, it's just a really uh, defined, detailed, you know, uh, sparkly top end. And then it just sounds really angry when you crank it up. So I really like it. Two knobs, I mean, it makes it really, see, really easy. But it's a perfect amp for smaller gigs and for recording as well. A uh, uh, slightly geeky question on yeah, the yeah. Uh, on the Pro Junior. Does it have negative feedback? Do you know? It has. Uh, I don't believe it has any negative feedback. And the EL84s make it very 
uh, sparkly and shiny when you combine the two. It's just got that that sort of loose thing. It's almost like a like a deluxe, you know, like the old Tweed deluxes have that sort of angry attitude. Yeah, for anyone who watched the Analog Man uh, edition, we plugged uh, one of the Pro Juniors into a 412 cab, and it just sounds so open and alive and like a huge amp. So. Uh, Neil, who works for Fender in the UK here, Neil, um, we need to get Pro Junior. <laughs> yeah, this has kind of been one of those ones I keep hearing from people. It's like this, like, oh, yeah, you almost forgot about yeah, this amp. And it's sure. like, wow, what a cool amp. And obviously it takes pedals really, really well, which is important, obviously, pedal show. And Jeff Beck uses them. Yes, that's, that's a ringing endorsement. I don't need to say any more, <laughs> I don't think. Uh, next one is Blues Junior. That's probably the, the biggest selling of the Hot Rod series because... It's great sound, grab and go, 12 inch speaker, EL84 is 15 watts, sounds really good, covers a whole mess of, of genres. So once again, don't want to mess with the things that people love about it. But one of the things that we kind of heard from people was like, I wish it had a little bit more extended low end. Um, and that's one of the things. Have we ever said that on the show, do you think, Dan? <laughs> from time to time. Well, there you go, see, so we're listening. Uh, the Pro is the only one that has the, the, the Jensen Alnico. The rest we're using Celestian A types. We really like those. They're, it's an American flavored British speaker yeah. that, that, that pairs perfectly with the amplifier. So adding that with the tone stack, it's, it's a rounder, warmer sound. Uh, Hot Rod Deluxe um, and DeVille, because they kind of are the same thing, I can kind of speak to both of them. But the Deluxe is 40 watts, two 6L6s. Uh, the thing we know that people love about that amp is the clean tone. It's like quintessential Fender cleans, you know, for, for a band on a budget. Um, but the thing that I always heard is, well, you know, use that and then use pedals, but, you know, maybe I won't use the overdrive side. And I'm like, well, how would I want to hear it or what would I do to, to make it maybe more Fender centric? So the way I kind of saw it is we have the bass breakers that do that kind of British crunchy thing really well. Let those do their thing and maybe search for a more Fender overdrive sound. So clean side stays the same. We did tweak the reverb a little bit to be a little bit sweeter sounding again, more musical. And then the overdrive side, we changed quite a bit. So it's, it's, it's got more mid-range. It's not quite as bright on the top end. Okay. Um, just, it's a, a warmer sound. And, and I mean, from talking to players and stuff, I feel like a lot of players these days, it's like, I keep hearing that. I, don't, I, don't, I hear warmth, I hear round, I hear you know, sweet tone. So that was kind of the idea. So when you, when you go onto the overdrive side, you still have the two, uh, the drive and more drive channel. In the past, I probably wouldn't use the more drive channel. Now, now I will just because I really like that. It's it's kind of a warm singing tone. So, just more Fender centric is about, I guess the way I would put it. Uh, I really want to hear that new drive channel. Then let's uh, maybe yeah. we could get a listen to that. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't we do that? <laughs> It's really interesting because it there's definitely an element of tweedy t tone in there mm -hmm. it's not like a super smooth modern distortion yeah you could definitely hear fender amp lineage in there yeah well that's that's the hope that's what we're trying to do so it doesn't feel like it's trying to be disingenuous it's it's closer to its roots yeah sure and so now i've got on the more drive so <laughs> You can hear it immediately, you can hear it immediately. I, I, I've always, we're gonna do this back in the studio, back to the studio. What you said I thought was very interesting, the shades of tweed. In, in the, the drive? In the drive section. Yeah, because it wouldn't be hard for Fender to, to design in a kind of smooth, modern overdrive, but they sounded like really good pushed Fender amps. They've completely revoiced the mid-range. We talked about that in the clip you've just watched. Uh, we are gonna get Pro Junior very soon yep. because it's very cool, cool. Amazing. very cool. Everything else they do. Very cool. All right, from there, we went and saw our dear friend, Mr. Robert Keeley. Okay, so our uh, very good friend, Mr. Robert Keeley, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, um, designed and made the DM drive. And I think. These lovely tote bags. Yeah, we're designing tote bags. You, you finally arrived when you've got your face on a bag. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Uh, and a badge. So, uh, anyway, DM drive. We're still utterly amazed with it, Robert but it was 2017's pedal. We're here to talk about 2018. 
some really cool things on there. What do we have? What do we have? We have uh, another influence that you guys have had on me. Can you can you tell there's a similarity? I saw that. I think you've actually not only helped get our name out there to areas of the world that we weren't in, markets we weren't in. That's what's so beautiful about this. But I just love the look of it, and I love the, the design that Daniel came up with, the order switching. Yeah. And so, frankly, it, it, it's really become kind of our new look. And, and I think you can kind of even see it in, in this duet as well. I wanted something then that started to work with some of our workstations, like the Monterey, the, the DNM, and the Dark Side. And I thought, uh, a gentleman in Nashville, uh, John Bollinger said, hey, you want to knock it out of the park in this arena, why don't you put your compressor and drive together? And I thought, oh, great. That gets to satisfy an itch of mine because I've wanted the order switch on the compressor and drive for, for the jam band stuff, Trey Anastasio Fish. So now I'm just like in Trey land and I can go back when I'm tired of it. And it's like glorious. So this is designed to work with the DNM and give you the compression give you yet a different drive sound than, than, than what might occur over here, you, you can get such a plethora of sounds here, but this kind of, you know, tube screamery mid-range focus is different than what's available over here. So I think they work together well. I think you can do something with the super fat mod in the duet then, and a delay sec reverb section that pairs with this. So I can see these things being sort of a, yeah. a fly date type of pedal board. Yeah. Let's, uh, maybe let's get a listen to Aria, shall we then, since that's what we're talking about. So, first we'll listen to the compressor. It's got the tone control here, it's got the blend control, and so it's exactly like our compressor plus. up is we, we have two different drive sections in here one is uh, no mid boost very clean and very full uh, low end response so let's listen to that saturation with a very pronounced mid boost. talks about compressor after overdrive and there it was in action you heard it a beat there it's such a cool sound it's such a wonderful sound so moving on to the duet I, I, just as we were sitting down ready to start filming um, drive delay and reverb in one pedal yeah. what's wrong with that yeah. right I, I gotta admit my inspiration came from from uh, Jorn Yule, uh from Mad Professor yeah, right. remember when he came out with the golden cello yes. oh back in the day I was I was so jealous of being able to put that combination in a pedal. And I thought, man, one day I gotta get there. And, and now we're there. And so there's a little bit more control. And 
Yeah. So the drive side is based on our Blues driver, and so it's got all the mods for the Blues driver in there. And then the, the delay side, we wanted to offer tap tempo, and we wanted to offer three different delay spaces that uh, that you could toggle through if, with the tap tempo jack. So uh, we've, we've categorized them in a 60s, 70s, 80s type thing because the delays and the reverbs uh, for the 60s are high pass filtered so they get thinned out yeah. and a little smaller uh, reverb space. And then as you go to the 70s, uh, it, gets, it has a uh, low pass filter on it so they sound darker and fuller. And then 80s is straight up digital. And it's got an insert too, so you're not you're not oh, stuck. Nice. Right? So nice. it can be split apart in any which way you want. Very good. Cool. Let's have a listen, Daniel. this experience in Germany there are certain things that for me that as soon as they connect me I just I get lost and even in this noise no, level I'm still <laughs> hearing that you know the beautiful so there's something about with those sort of filters on those repeats the the initial the, the tone of the guitar is still coming through so it enables you to have a lot more effect level without it sounding overly processed right I would like to talk about this one if you have a chance. Okay, so this is really, really exciting. First of all, coolest finish cool. on a pedal You ever. have to touch it. Eggshell. It is like birthday cake. Man. So, check out this. Stereo in, stereo out. Um, the tap, hold it down, memorizes your knobs. You can have three presets, right? So then you just hold it down for a second and a half, and the next thing you know, you're toggling through your presets. Now, what's really cool about this particular tape uh, echo that we have here is I had this daydream one day when I was driving to work I was like I really don't always like a very strong modulation on the delay the caverns has it and it's just successful because lots of people like it yeah, yeah. but for me I want some movement in the background with the delay but I don't want it to be pitch oriented so I came to the shop and I'm like haven't we done like flanger only on the delay trails and no I'm like let's try it it sounded so ridiculously good then I couldn't, then then the crew was like having to hold me back, like, don't release it, don't release it, let's do something with it, magnificent. And so this is what it became. And that's currently in development, Robert, right? This is actually done. The only reason this thing is not working is we had a, a little snafu with a part, okay. a part number, and uh, we tried desperately to get it going here. And all the pieces work, we just had a wrong part. Just one more thing to mention before we wrap. Um, down here on the floor is a Supro amp, and I noticed on the top, it says Keeley Engineering on it. Yes. So this is a great thing. I, I contact David Coltai earlier last year, and I go, I, I would really like to take you up on your offer for some amplifiers for Germany or for um, next year or for the NAMM show. He's like, sure. He's like, hey, would you mind sending me your logo? I got a great idea. And he's like, what kind of amp do you want for the show? So I go through and I list 
certain specs that I want that, that I use in my office for testing and developing the pedals. Next thing you know, he calls me a couple weeks ago, ex out of his skin excitement about this Supro amp. And he's like, and he has the same feeling after he sees the logo on the amplifier. He's like, this is a great mashup. We need a pedal platform amplifier. And uh, so, you know, get with, I, I guess it's Bruce Zinke that's there doing some of the design stuff. Get Robert in there to, to shape the tone of this thing for your pedal development. And then uh, work with Sweetwater to have a pedal platform amplifier out. So this is the beginning stages of it right here. And I, I think it's gonna be a great thing because Dave is like me, he's, he's a very excited guy and uh, very passionate about the sound of his products. So I'm very much looking forward to working with him on that. I can, I can see, uh, there's a, we have a, a Supro shaped hull yep. at the Pedal Shed of Dreams at the moment. Yes, uh, I think we just filled it. Yeah, I think we just filled it, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> In there, but... Cool, you may not have heard it here first, but you heard it here, right. Um... It's the first place you heard it. Oh, is it? This is the first time I've talked about it out loud, out loud. yeah. Aha, you heard it here first. <laughs> wow. Cool, so that's Keely uh, at NAMM 2018, back to the studio. The new pedal sound awesome, and then Phil X turned up. He, genuine rock star. Yeah. 100% yep. bona fide rock star. We love Phil X. And we the, love Phil. We did do a video with him at Gitcom, which was a long time ago now, I know, but I haven't got around to editing it, so, but that will come out. And it's, uh, Phil doesn't do much playing in that interview, but he does talk a lot about his experiences and all that kind of stuff, and it's fascinating. So fascinating. Hopefully that will come out soon. Okay, we saw... Um, Where next? Uh, Sakalis. Sakalis. Is that Tsaka what? Tsakalis. Yeah. Very good. So I apologise if we haven't pronounced that correctly. Um, Tsakalis Audio Works. Yeah, very keen to show us a couple things. Didn't do any audio there, but we're going to get some of their pedals in. They had one of the best pedal names I've heard called the Funkify. The Funkify, which is a uh, filter pedal that had an octave. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can octave up or octave down. Yep. It's really cool. Sound killer. So we're going we're gonna to get one of those in. Uh, and uh, a multi modulation pedal called the Galactic modulation so we we want to hear a bit more from those guys awesome um Taste Chase Bliss. Bliss. can't say enough great things uh, about joel corty <laughs> he's such a legend the stand looked fantastic uh, it looked awesome and they had soft carpet yeah it was really cool it's nice when you've been traipsing the halls for you know hours on end carpet is an unusual oh, luxury. luxury yeah uh, like, so two um, new pedals today um before that though before that, what was there? That was the. This was there. This was there. Here with our dear friend, Mr. Joel Corti um, from Taste Bliss Audio. We love this guy. It, uh, constantly coming up with really innovative, really interesting stuff. First of all, though, I just want to quickly touch base about this amplifier. Yep. Um, you designed the chorus in this, which is yeah. the Sorcerer, and of course, it's the amp for Ryan Adams. Yes, and um, if you're into Ryan Adams, Design a chorus for Ryan Adams. It's a little in intimidating of a thing. But I haven't talked to him specifically about it, but I, I guess, I mean, I got the specs from him, but I guess he loves it. So I, I think right. he's gonna be here tomorrow. So the word from his people yes. is that he's really- he's Well, from Chris, because Chris designed the amp, okay. which is ridiculously good sounding. That's amazing, yeah. amazing. Chris bits it. Okay, the two- Yeah. So the two new things you've got is uh, the Condor yep. and the Thermé. Thermé, yep. okay, fantastic. The Condor is a, I want to say... stuff. It's a it's an EQ, right. first and foremost, but then it, it, it also has an overdrive circuit in it and it's got like some really interesting resonant filtering on it as well. So uh, um, you can do some ramping and modulation with that with the dip switches or you can just use it as an EQ or as as a as a really nice overdrive too. Perfect. Let's hear some sounds. <laughs> Can 
do normal EQ stuff, but also with the filters, get, you know, you can do like a cocked wah type of thing. And, and over to the Thermae. Eh? Yes. Now, this one's I'm intrigued. crazy. So it's an analog delay, but like the voicing is more, it's not like a traditional, like guitar kind of voicing, right. which is what we feel like we have that covered with tonal recall. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it changes the delay time on the fly to in like the musically interesting kind of ways. The thing is, is I've found about it, it was whenever, whenever I try to get it to do something, it just it never responds how I want. But if I try to think of it more as like a, a collaborator and play with it, because it kind of has a mind of its own, that's where I get like happier. Why don't we start with um, step mode actually? So just start with a normal delay. And what's cool is you can step through intervals, which makes it a lot more useful in like a live context, because right. it's not just sequencing, sequencing through. So yeah, let's see. Okay. How would you play single notes or pull it to this one? Well, you can just get a feel for the delay just like stepping through an octave so um, you know you're playing the um, with the delay and then it's just like going up twice as fast it's kind of like whenever you want then the other thing you can do and this is going to be insane so uh, see how you like it but <laughs> flag down uh, it sequences through the steps like if it happens right away or there's a glide so just keep playing that it's gonna sound ridiculous but <laughs> yeah, As we said repeatedly in yesterday's video, it is really hard to hear anything. The, the, the constant sound pressure level in there is incredible. And make any sort of kind of valid judgment on anything, yeah. you're just, you're getting a... Fender is a bit different because they have kind of a closed stand. But and we got there before everyone else. Yeah, but it's, it's um, it is really hard to hear anything. So we're looking forward to getting all the stuff yeah. into that pedal shed and actually plugging it in properly. So we finally managed to catch up with Scotty Smith. We've been playing his pedals for a long time. So Scotty's from Pro Analog. Pro Analog Devices. Pro Analog Devices. Pro Analog Devices. And we finally met him today. Legend. Scotty's been in the business for a long time. Mm. He knows everybody. Um, so yeah, it was great meeting him today. Uh, here's what he had to say. We feature uh, Pro Analog Devices stuff on the show a lot. We love it. This is Scotty behind Pro Analog Devices, the man. It's such a pleasure to finally meet you. It's my pleasure, I'm and honored. We've just been gifted this really special, so, so take us through this, this is the Comet. This is the Comet Coda. It's an overdrive, clean boost. It's a discrete preamp, a real one. Uses JFET and transistors. I actually took a, um, very famous early 60s microphone preamp that's for mic right. and then use that as a design basis excuse me it starts with an N I can't say it on camera <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. but it, it's only it's only ever used in a microphone preamp right. and I thought well I had this idea I was like I, you know I see all this stuff, great you know great pedals by you guys you know for the other manufacturers and this whole you know, like Bogner and yeah. uh, Alexander they make great pedals I thought I could take this with my own ideas redesign it and make it a pro analog devices pedal and the owners of Comet Amplifiers Holger Noltzel and Jim Odom contacted me to design something for him and I said hey I got this idea where I really want to challenge that whole amplifier in a box and break down some barriers we love that that's <laughs> well awesome. that's what I do is, yeah, yeah, is to yeah. challenge people yeah, yeah. and challenge the market yeah, right. you know and I don't really conform well so it ended up being this and 
It has an IC stage, it's an output IC stage. You can turn it off and just go through the preamp. It has treble and bass controls that are boost only. It has gain, which is your overdrive and distortion, and drive, which is your input signal, and then level. Now, when you engage the output, you know, this output stage, these work together, and there's so many different tones in here. It's, and this is my own personal prototype, so I don't own a pedal. I'm giving this to you guys because you guys are so wonderful to me, uh, you know. Uh, one of the shows we, uh, we featured the, the Manticore, which Mick and I both fell in love with. But we're getting emails and questions now all the time from guys saying, we're trying to buy one and we can't do it. And they're, they're contacting us. It's like, so, so what do we say to those guys? Well, what you tell them is I'm growing slowly. I've had so much interest because of the show than a lot of other players is that I got bogged down in emails and I'm catching up, but I, I have to hire a new crew, new webmaster. I'm putting a web, website together. Since it's me and two other people, our, yeah. our motions are slow. That's okay. You it's know? It's like that pedal show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're and right I, there I'm, with you. And the, but I'll tell you this, everyone that's contacted me has been wonderful. Awesome. So. It's been fantastic, mate. Thank Thanks you so much. What a pleasure. I it. All right. The legend that is Scotty Smith, ladies and gentlemen, back to the studio. He was keen to point out that his yellow glasses weren't a fashion statement. Yeah, but he, he looks so cool. <laughs> <isn't> he? <laughs> he has that thing with light where he's really sensitive to it, apparently. Okay. Something like that. All right. Yeah, I thought they just looked cool, personally. All right. Vampire eyes. Yeah. Okay. Um, or assassin. <laughs> I, was, I was like, if they're Ray-Ban shaped and they're yellow. Right. I don't know whether it's because somebody wore them in a film once, but yeah. Awesome. Right. Jam pedals. We like these guys. We do like these They're guys. They're from Greece. They are from Greece. Uh, and they make great stuff. The Delay Llama, which we really, really like. Can we go over there? Yeah, I have family in, in Greece. Do you? Yeah. I've caught you in Corfu. Yeah, well, okay. which is not quite Greece, but anyway. Uh, well, it is Greece. Sorry. It absolutely <laughs> is Greece. What I meant to say was it's not mainland Greece. Right, is okay. what I, what there, I there meant. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> off the scan. So it was nearly a, it was nearly a border. I'd call food then. Anyway, whatever. Uh, so we like these guys. 10th anniversary. 10th anniversary, and they had some really cool stuff. The Red Muck Mark II yep. is out, and also the Eureka Fuzz. Yeah, uh, uh, and that's one of those is, one of those is Big Muffy, and one of them is uh, Germanium. Silicon Hybrid Fuzz. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Very and cool. And this. Uh, there'll be a picture of this on the screen now but it's called the pink flow and it's a multi-effect and it's got all that stuff in it a delay llama a ripple a waterfall red muck a tube dreamer a dinosaur and it's all about david gilmore can i tell you one thing that i was really excited about yeah uh they have the Arkenbach series john Arkenbach from the simpsons didn't john Lennon used to play those guitars Arkenbacher? no <laughs> you win that was great. It wasn't that great, to um, be fair. So, yes, he's designed. So one of the things about the, the jam pedals is that artwork is amazing. It really is. And they have some uh, the custom shop lines of pedals. Yeah. But they've done these 3D printed yeah, things. Yeah. It's just it's yeah. amazing. Anyway, um, John Luckenberg, one of the designers from The Simpsons, has also done some artwork uh, for the pedals. that's who he is. Yes. Okay. So cool. Yeah, we like those. Happy, yeah. happy anniversary jam yes, pedals. Yes, well done, guys. Ibanez New Tube Screamer. So, Korg New Tube technology, which I'm reliably... So, okay. The world is split over the Korg New Tube. Yes. Let's be honest about it. So, when Dan and I did a show on... Um, uh, I can't remember what it was about, but we had one of the MV amps, and I was a little bit sniffy about the New Tube technology. You know, in a sort of... If it's a valve, it's a valve. And anyway, I was... Quite a few people got in touch, not least Korg themselves, to say... It is a valve. Okay. It has all the things that a valve has. Right. Therefore, it is a valve. Okay. Technically, so is a transistor, but anyway. Well, okay, so whatever. That's one side of the story. The other side of the story, which is most amp designers and people I talk to outside of that saying it's not, and it doesn't sound like one. So, I'm not coming down on any side of the fence yet, and we haven't really been able to hear the new Tube Screamer. By the way, the original Tube Screamer didn't have a valve in it either, so this is a progression. It's not... Mm. It's, and it's super interesting. Yeah, and it also has a clean blend. Yeah, and, uh, which okay. I thought was really interesting. Um, so yeah, very keen to get one on the show. Yeah, and and go through it. But yeah, 
Nice. Yeah, can't wait to hear it. Yeah. And Tom Quayle. Tom Quayle, the legend, showing off his new Ibanez signature guitar at the show. The joy on his face. He sat there with his new guitar. There's a big, massive poster of him with the guitar, and he's going, "I can't believe it. I can't, can't believe yeah, it." Yeah, yeah. You know, not dissimilar to us in the and the um, DNM drive, except he can actually play the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Empress Effects. Yep. I don't know what this is. We need to spend some time with it. Literally it's, no idea. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to call up an, a, a picture on my phone to help explain. Dan, you might be able to... Let's see how wrong you can get it before I find the picture. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, it called? I'm, it's called the... Mm, Zoya. Zoya! The Zoya. Right. Use modules to build any effect you want. It has a delay line, feedback, it has uh, modulation, it has, I'm looking at a diagram on my screen here, it has a mixer, it has, oh goodness me, I don't, I don't understand it already, a compressor, gain, equalizer, tremolo, reverb. Yes, but I think that's quite... Delay. It could be misleading because it sounds like a multi-effects multi device, but the sound that happened when you just put the earphones on it's like nothing else I've ever heard. It says, string these effects together to create a virtual pedal board. And then, down here, sorry, I know this is very antisocial doing this in front of you, but otherwise I'm just never going to know. Then you can create instruments in a Euro rack style, i.e. Ah, all bunched up together, to become a super versatile synth generating machine. Right. It was, when I first saw the pictures of it, the pictures make it look much bigger. Yeah. It was a, it's a pedal size, and it's, look, it's incredible. You, I think one of those things we'll need to sit down with yeah, and have a play with. Clearly, I'm never going anywhere near it. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, it's awesome. And if you're creative and out there on the edge doing things, I'm, I, I, I've never even seen the edge musically. <laughs> I don't even know what it looks like. So, so maybe... We should get that in and uh, see, if, see if I could at least see it in the distance. There we go. The challenge. It's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I appreciate this probably sounds a bit facetious. I don't mean to sound facetious because what these guys are doing is unbelievable tech. Oh, man. It's, it's creative. It's boundary breaking. Yep. It's, and so I don't want to like... No, no. Look, be, be, I, I don't want to seem dismissive of their creativity and their artistry because that's what it is. Yeah. It's not just technology for technology's sake. We we have the you know the Empress um, River ecosystem, the, the ecosystem, and you know, and it, it is magnificent. Mm. Um, and what they've created is a, it's a very creative tool. It's, but it's one of those things that it's not instinctive. You need to sit down with it and. You'll need well, to do some research. Is it not instinctive if you're somewhat <coughs> younger than us and you've grown up and you're digital native and you've grown up with apps and you've grown up with uh, interfaces and that's your the way you deal with the world? No. <laughs> I don't know. You have kids. I don't. But All I know is no, my nephew's trying to swipe the screen on the television. You'll need to sit down with that. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's amazing. It's As amazing. I said, never going to happen. Right. Simon said I've got a t-shirt problem. It's my belly after all the, uh, all the breakfasts. All right, Earthquaker Devices. These guys have been consistently putting out creative, amazing sounding pedals. Which in a way doesn't really explain the Westwood Overdrive. Yeah. Which sort of seems a very straight ahead kind of uh, pedal for them. Yeah, but they've made up for that with the data corruptor <laughs> thing. Whoa. Whatever was, you know, um, normal about the, the Westwood, had, they've, they've completely knocked the other one out of the park. Here we are at Earthquake. It's always an exciting place to be at NAMM. Uh, Corey's going to tell us about a couple things for 2018. Sure. So here's our, our two new releases for NAMM uh, this year. We have the Westwood. The Westwood is a relatively mild-mannered, uh, what we're calling translucent overdrive. Uh, with an active EQ section. So the overdrive goes from pretty much light to medium gain, and uh, you're gonna get uh, 20 dB of cut or boost um, for the bass and treble frequencies. The oh. center point of the uh, bass filter is about 80 hertz, and then 2K for the treble side. Okay. So it's really friendly frequencies for both bass and guitar. Um, so really quickly, let's just show you how this is. Everything will be about noon. <laughs> jump to the 
data corruptor. Now the data corruptor is a, it's a very, very unique beast. It is a PLL, it's a phase lock looping harmonizer. So what's going on is that the guitar signal is going into the pedal and then uh, the phase lock loop is basically an oscillator is going to track the guitar signal exactly with pitch. And then from there we can multiply and divide that to create harmonies three octaves above or below the root. Um, and with multiple intervals in between. So if you imagine six octaves on a piano, that's a very, very big chord. Um, there's also a square wave fuzz circuit and a mixer section in here where you can control the level of each voice, as well as a frequency modulator section where you can have a glide, so it'll be like a portamento like sweep between both pitches. And uh, the vibrato mode, which is quite fun, it's almost like a laser beam sound. So I have it in right now set to being uh, two octaves below on the sub oscillator, and the master oscillator is going to be uh, one octave and a fifth above. So let's hear okay. how it sounds. Nothing more needs to be said, back to the studio. Something I found fascinating, uh, where we were stood, there was the orange wall, and there was a timeline. 50 years of orange. Yeah, 1968, orange, uh, orange launched, and they're celebrating that anniversary in 2018, obviously, for those of you good at maths. Um, iconic brand that yeah. grew out of Denmark Street in London, or around that area. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it, was it Charing Cross Road, Orange Music? Blah blah blah. Super interesting history. Yeah, yeah amazing. Um, Orange have a couple new um, Terra amps out. Oh, I believe cool. signature one. Uh, I apologise for not getting the details correct, um, but check. Terra. <laughs> sorry, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what happens. When it seems like we're drunk. We're not blooming drunk. All right, just to, just to it's make the point. It's been a big anyway, day. Uh, go check the Orange website and. Um, see what see what they have uh, for 2018 but it's you know happy anniversary orange and yeah. aid well done. It's or awesome. cliff and all you guys there yeah. congratulations brilliant um tim mills tim mills uh, i didn't see him so yeah I was we were with... we were on our way to zvex yeah. and um i saw tim tim had a stand at now i don't know if it's for the first time i think it might have been for the first time bare knuckle pickups brilliant british brand yeah, yeah. wonderful make fantastic pickups unusually right across the spectrum mm. so they're uh, vintage style stratton pickups are mm -hmm. awesome humbuckers really lovely pf styles mm. right up to the progressive stuff that rabia uses ah. nail bomb etc 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 some really really great pickups tim and bare knuckle have introduced a new series called boot camp and cool. it's all about a slightly lower price point but not not a lower price point for the sake of doing a lower price point product it's mm -hmm. just a function of the fact they are simpler right so there are humbuckers strap pickups tele pickups and p90s mm -hmm. and each of those four types of pickup come in three strengths as it were old guard true grit and brute force oh wow so there's three strengths so if like most people you're completely bamboozled okay because right. if you go and try and buy pickups for your guitar, it's option paralysis, isn't it? Absolutely. What the hell do I do now? So this is like, I just want a good mid-power humbucker. Humbucker, true grit. I right. want a vintage sounding strap pickup. Strap, old guard. Great. Simple, simple, simple. Mm. Um, quite exciting from, from bare knuckle in that respect. It's fantastic. It makes, yeah, it makes awesome stuff. I, I had some of his... 50s tally pickups. Yeah. And they're wonderful. Yeah, I've yeah, got really uh, various bare knuckle pickups all over the place. So, uh, yeah, check those out. Go to the um, bare knuckle website and have a look. Okay. I was very excited about seeing 
the Zvex stand and meeting Zachary Vex. I've never met him before. No, I've never met him before. Which is crazy. Yeah. Given, you know, how many years we've been doing all this, but mm. yeah. He's arguably the most interesting character in this business. Oof, damn. Causing is, trouble there. He is fascinating. He is fascinating. Watch this. Okay, here we are at the incomparable Zvex FX, and we're very lucky to have Zachary Vex right here twiddling knobs. How cool is that? So Zach, uh, Vibraphase is new for 2018 and it's based on this. Perhaps you could tell us the story. The Vibraphase itself uh, was powered by the candle, of course. And you want to come over here and look at this? And the, the candle uh, provided all the power. You could do like a four or six hour candle. It's very interesting, but not incredibly practical for a pedal board. <laughs> so what we did was we took the electronics package out of here and then we created a modulation circuit that uses a microcontroller and lookup tables and yeah, some yeah, things yeah. that we've done before yeah. in other pedals in order to create a texture that was extremely similar from some for some settings to a lot of the sounds you can get out of this mechanical contrivance. But the way that it's designed, it gives you a much wider range of settings and it has a feedback knob, which gets you that really watery sort of uh, whistling, you can get up to you know, almost a whistling tone. Um, it, it makes a really wide number of sounds and, and the speed control is incredibly wide range. I have to ask you, what was your principal inspiration for creating this in the first place? Because obviously it's a phenomenal piece of engineering. And yeah, it you know, the thing is, I was, I was looking at Sterling engines for an entirely different reason. I, was, I had a personal thing I was working on just for something for my house. Sure. And in, during my research, I discovered, hi, I discovered these Sterling engines that were made by a guy who's a friend of mine now in, in, in Germany, Jürgen. And I got a couple of them from him. And I looked at them and I was like, I should, I, they're just the right size to use in some sort of pedal. And I was thinking they'd actually be on a pedal. Right. You could put it on your pedal board, you know. But as I began to build up the idea, I realized I'd need an awful lot more space and a lot more adjustability. And then it just kind of turned into this monstrous steampunk thing. I walked into the machine shop, my friend's machine shop, basement machine shop, Mike Galenchen. And I had a whole box full of brass parts, just rod, raw rod and, and blocks, and sheets of brass. And, all kinds of stuff, and, and he said, where's the drawings I'm supposed to work from? And I said, I, I don't have any drawings. And he goes, well, I don't, I, how can I work with the drawings? And I said, well, it's in my head, you know, I got the whole thing and worked on my head. And so the first day, I walked up to his milling machine that he made everything on, right. and it had a whole bunch of these little lever locks, that, and I said, just make me eight of those. Can you make me eight of those? And he, he goes, yeah, sure, I can make those. So the next day I came back and he ate eight of them, you know, he's finishing polishing them up. <laughs> like I've got these now to what I do you know <laughs> and bit by bit we, we started with the platform and we set up the first post the pillar and it's so awesome I'm gonna you'll have to hear it back on the on the on the video but obviously we associate Zvex with this very special kind of creativity and that that story just is is everything about that so if you cannot fit that on your pedal board and you can fit that on your pedal board <laughs> we go from that to the vibra phase Zach, thank you so much for your time. Very, Very cool indeed. Thanks for the interview. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate your time too. I could talk to that guy for hours. He is fascinating. Um, and also, massive thank you to Eric Sexy. Um, you know, he's been a, a, a great friend to us and, you know, love their stuff. The new um, Fuzz Factory, so the one with the, the white writing, is the first ever silicon fuzz factory. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to get some, they're sending some over. We'll get them on the show. Great. Awesome Let's stuff. Let's give that a go. Yeah. Uh, and uh, from white writing to red pedals. Mm, nice. nice. Nicely oh, done. Nice. Um, exotic of EP booster, SP compressor, SL drive, Very good. BB, etc. fame, lovely, lovely pedals. Mm -hmm. uh, have the Andy Timmons BB preamp, oh, is that correct? That is correct. So Andy, one of his uh, sounds he used for a long time, uh, he had an old BB um, preamp pedal. And there was something about that pedal that, it's one of the, you know, one of the very early ones, and he loved it. And he couldn't quite match it with, with other BB preamps. Yep. So this one, they've 
taken apart his original one. There's a lock of his hair inside. Measured, <laughs> measured everything, um, and have created a replica awesome. of the of, of Andy's BB pedal. Well, that was it. Day two of Nam, the Nam o'clock news. Second edition. Second edition. Done. Party on, Mick. Party on, Dan. See you tomorrow.